Laser tag. Since the game of laser tag began way back in the year 1986, no one has ever equaled his record. He never took six hits on either his star sensor or his star helmet. He was never tagged out. So far, I've never been tagged out either. Yeah? Well, your luck's about to change. Will they be idolizing your statue in the year 3010? Start building your reputation now. Get the laser tag game kit with an infrared beam shooting starlight star belt and a star sensor with an LED readout that scores up to six tags. Star helmet and star vest available separately. Batteries not included. Look for Laser Tag Academy Saturday mornings on NBC. 1986, Worlds of Wonder, Inc. Welcome, dear listener, to our podcast. Jeff and Rick present Unpacking the Power of Power Pack. Where we journey through each issue of the most underrated Marvel series of the 80s while drinking beer. Analyzing awesome and amazing adolescent adventures and absorbing alcohol. I am Jeff. And I am Rick. And what this random banner needs is more cowbell. (laughs) Random banner time, buddy. (laughs) You did a Christopher Walken earlier and I'm like, this is what's queued up. This is fantastic. (laughs) Some people would call it a Christopher Walken. I would call it a very bad accent. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what he sounds this, like anymore. It's terrible. This is my Christopher Walken. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I need, yeah, I need to watch more stuff with him in it just so that I can hit hit those words right. <laughs> I just need. I've got a fever, and it can only be cured with more cowbell. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear what that sounds like. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. It's everybody horrible. loves a good Christopher horrible. Walken. I think everybody has a bad Christopher Walken impersonation. In Everybody's them. got a bad impersonation yeah yeah i think everybody does <laughs> just pretty bad i think everybody's got a pretty good wookie impersonation and a pretty bad every other impersonation <laughs> no i got pretty bad in- impersonations across the board <laughs> was it uh chewbacca with asthma <laughs> <laughs> yes yes it was <laughs> Random banter. Uh, yes what's probably, up with your life probably by the time that this comes out uh we will be I believe that when this comes out, we will be finishing up our camp out to Shampooey State Park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if I, I'm going to come home from that weekend and probably get this thing posted. Yeah. So it might be a little late when this comes up because that's going to be about August 8th, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a little overlap, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. yeah. This is editing Rick just popping in to say, no, I was completely wrong. This episode is coming out prior to us going to Shampooey. If you hear this podcast prior to the 10th of August of 2019, and you're somewhere around the Portland-Salem area, come on down to Shampooey. Around 4 o'clock, Jeff and Rick Presents will be doing a live broadcast somewhere around A-Loop. I'm not kidding. Bye. Besides that, uh, it's, it's been a little crazy because with everything else that's been going on, a whole lot of little things we've been having some interviews we've mm-hmm. been i've been going to a couple of comic cons i've just been trying to get things organized with the podcast and get things done while we're going through the summer vacation with the kid so yeah just uh, just a lot of crazy summer vacation type things and uh, that, that's that's pretty much it for me i mean just just busy work and doing this stuff but yeah. um yeah i will say that Smash Fiction put out a two-hour cut of me and five other podcasters talking about all the MCU movies, and we listed them all. Yeah, you're ranking of them, correct? And we ranked them. Yep. And we each had our own rankings, and we talked about each film, and it was a lot of fun. So check out uh, Smash Fiction, and I think it's called the Epic MCU ranking something or another. But just check out Smash Fiction. You'll and, find uh, it. Yeah, you'll find it. Yeah. It was uh, put out in uh, beginning of July, so it's quite good it's it's a couple hours long but we had a lot of fun it was really fun so i'm looking forward to getting the chance to uh listening to that uh spoilers yeah (laughs) that's why i said the chance to listen to it because i am 53 minutes into captain marvel and then and holding and (laughs) i haven't seen endgame yet so it's coming it'll happen one of these days one of these days one of these days what about you besides not watching movies well uh you mentioned that we had an interview so uh yeah uh to stick with my tradition of getting sick before an interview i 
got the cold that was going around the Portland area that was uh, hitting everybody pretty hard. So uh, the bonus on that is that when we were interviewing Jeremy Whitley, I was only sick. And then it was the next day that I came down with like laryngitis. So I couldn't talk. So that was wonderful. Uh, During that sick sick time, uh, we went down to Winston, Oregon and went to the wildlife safari with some friends and went and... I like that. Yeah. A great way of doing it is uh, we traveled around in our friend's RV so we could poke our heads out of any window and have snacks and sodas. And hey, guess what? You know, you can have sodas because there's a bathroom in your car. So it's really great. So it's kind (laughs) of like no needing to rush through to get to the end to get to the Florida potty. It was... uh, It worked out really well. And then... uh, so that so we had a weekend away, which was really fun. And then we get back into town, and the very next morning I wake up, and I'm like, hey, cool, I have laryngitis, a really sore throat, this cold, what I think is a sinus infection, and I'm pretty positive I have pink eye now. So, hooray! I just need to tell you that I am extremely happy that you started getting sick yeah. after the first time, after our last time we got together, mm-hmm. and finished being sick right before this recording. Yeah, I'm on like day nine of my uh, all my drops and yeah. pills and sprays and everything to take care of everything. Yeah, it was great going into urgent care, and they're like, yeah, you have the things you think. Go yeah. to the pharmacy. I'm like, thank you. Actually, yeah. I was like, I want to gouge out my sludge eye, please. <laughs> I vote if you give us a two-sentence replay, because that'll walk us out of this moment. I can do that quite easily. The power children are back at home with their loving parents and are ready to settle in for an extended stay of cuddling and popcorn when a sleeping Franklin gives them the sleepy heads up that not all is well in the Morlock tunnels. So it is once again time for our power swap pack to have a nocturnal mission into the deadly depths where they meet the mass murdering mutant marauders, mass murdering mutant Morlocks merrily. But with the help of X Factor, they are able to escape after saving their friend Leech's life. Now that the I seriously cried when Leech was grieving over the death of his adopted mom, Annalie. Two sentence replay is over. Why don't you give me a beer and tell us what our power pack pick is? My pleasure, my friend, and well written, sir. There are times when I have an idea about what I want to get. I had an idea once. Once! Once, once. (laughs) And there are times when I I really struggle. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is one of those times. Okay, so this is going to be a... uh... This is going to be a little bit of a... uh, of a stretch, right. but I need you to go with me. I can go with you. I, I, Keep, I bet you can pull out your make weight beer and I will find a tie in for you. All right. Uh, what is the name of this issue? The Breakfast Club. And here is the beer that I would like to give you. It's from Oslan Brewing and it's called Dawn, Dawn Patrol. Some people have breakfast in Dawn. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. instead of Breakfast Club, we have Dawn Patrol <laughs> Pacific Ale. <laughs> And it's story time. Oh, that's cool. It's got a uh, it's got a lion head on it oh, in a stylized blue and black and little silver outline yes, on it. That's, that's really nice. cool. I like the look of that. Story time on it is Pride of the Organic Northwest. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's, it. that's, that's story that's time. It. That's it. <laughs> it is a ABV 5.3 IBU 10, and it has it's a pale ale with hops of Cascade and El Dorado. Wow, that is hoppy smelling. Kind of citrusy, too. Yeah, like I said, it is a weird little line. I decided to go with just a play on the name of the comic with a nod to Power Pack being on patrol at dawn. Hey, you know, patrolmen uh, will carry clubs with them. So, yeah. <laughs> Some people have breakfast at dawn and uh, patrolmen have billy clubs. So, well, I mean, breakfast I, they, club. They, they were more or less on patrol at dawn. There so, you go. Oh, so, they actually really are in this one because it is literally yeah. like five, six in the morning. So, right. yeah. So, I mean, like I said, it, this one was a very weird connection, but, you know, we went with it. That smells really it, it's kind of sweet, but very hops. Yeah, very, very kind hoppy. of a, a little bit of... Did you say it had citra hops in it? Because it smells citra hoppy. Um, no, yeah, it's it's Cascade and El Dorado hops. No idea what those are, but uh, it smells kind of nice. Yeah, in a it, it, it's a pleasant hop smell, mm-hmm. and it is super cloudy. It is a very, very very cloudy beer. You cannot see through that. Very juicy, very cloudy looking beer. Yeah, but uh, let's let's try it out here. Yeah, it's got the tang of the hops. Yeah, but a pleasant aftertaste on it. Goes in the mouth very soft, mm-hmm. and then it really kind of like bolds up yeah. in its flavor report. Yeah. You drink some and you're like, yeah, okay. That's kind of a thing. And then it goes, and then it's just like, it goes, yeah. And makes like a fist on your tongue and, and then, your taste buds. But then it up. goes away. Yeah. It's uh, I, I'll have to spend some time drinking this and see what I'm thinking about it so far. Uh, not, not bad. It's got, it's got definitely got the, the citrus toppy taste in there. Yeah. But it's not a strong hop. It's it's no, very, it's, it's pretty that, light. That, that IBU 10 is correct. That's yeah. got a, just the 10 bitterness level. So it's, 
doesn't really stay. It's it's pleasant. It's pretty good. I mean, it'd be nicer if today was a warmer day. Yeah. But like it had been most every other day. Today is just kind of muggy. Yeah, a little muggy. Now this is not a bad little beer. It's it doesn't taste altogether unpleasant. Yeah. That's it's a nice little beer. It's a good summer beer. A good summer beer. Now that we have our beers, let's get to the opening credits, if you please. Power Pack, issue number 28, February 1987, The Breakfast Club. Credits, writer, Louise Simonson. Pencils, Terry Shoemaker. Inks, Hilary Barda. Letterers, Joe Rosen. Colors, Glennis Oliver. Editor, Carl Potts. Editor-in-chief, Jim Shooter. Alex Power, a.k.a. Destroyer. Oldest Power sibling, disintegrates matter, turning it into energy, which he can expel into power balls. Julie Power, a.k.a. Molecula, Mistress of Density. Second oldest power sibling, controls her molecular density. Jack Power, a.k.a. Well, he hasn't said it yet, but I think he eventually comes to counterweight. Second youngest power sibling, increases or decreases the gravity of objects he touches. Katie Power, a.k.a. Star Streak. Youngest power sibling, flies very fast, leaving a rainbow trail behind her. And Franklin Richards, a.k.a. Tattletale. He can see the future with his dreams, as well as a host of other little fun powers. And he is the son of Reed and Sue Richards of the Fantastic Four fame. Also guest starring Dr. and Mrs. Power. They still don't know their kids have powers. The Fantastic Four, Franklin's parents, his uncle, the Human Torch, and She-Hulk. They're in space. And the Avengers, which is only the Black Knight and Hercules and the Butler Jarvis. Apparently, immediately following their foray into the fatality-filled furrow known as the Morlock Tunnels, the kids have decided not to go home, even though they just got back from being space kidnapped and just snuck out of their house, and it's like 5 a.m. in the morning, and they know that their parents are soon to wake up. No, these masters of mind, these intellectual individuals, these subteens of smarts, they decide to try and sneak into the Avengers Mansion. That is right. These kids are making... All the wrong choices in all the wrong places. But Mamma Mia, why are they making this choice? Well, I'm glad that you asked. You see, after they comforted poor Leech last issue, following the mass murdering of his mom and most of the Morlocks that he knows, Franklin really started to miss his parents. So the powers agreed to take him to the Avengers Mansion to see if they could find the AA of the FF. That's the absent adults of the Fantastic Four for those of you playing the home version of this podcast. But it is really early, and that place has to have, like, top-notch alarms, right? Oh, it does. But the four-and-a-half-year-old son of Mr. Fantastic knows the code, and Julie can just cloud in and punch in the code. So, you know, easy-peasy. Bringa, bringa, bringa. Lemons unsqueezy. With the kids in the kitchen and the security alarms blazing, Franklin guesses that the alarm codes just may have changed. Did you see Alex accidentally disintegrating a toaster? Yeah, I hope that's not Steve Rogers' favorite toaster. Uh, why? Because you do not do that to America's Toast. I don't get it. Would you hurry up and see Endgame already? Anyway, the kids are freaking out, yelling and crashing into each other. Bumbling would be a delicate way of putting it, but I will just say that they are putting on a display of how not to be a premier super team in the home of currently two premier super teams. But I do like the one part where Katie berates Alex for doing something that he always yells at her for, i.e. accidentally disintegrating something. Amongst the infighting, the kids hear someone approaching and figure that they will have to face the Avengers with their Marx Brother routine. They decide to costume off back into their pajamas they were wearing the night before and behave like regular dumb kids. Except for Julie, who has clouded out of her bedclothes when they flew into the boys' room. Oopsies! She quickly costumes back on, hoping that her uniform will just pass for pajamas. Halt, miscreants, or face the wrath of Hercules! And just in time because the Fraternal Order of the Medieval Brotherhood arrives. I think that they are known as the Avengers. Really? Because I see a guy in a sleeveless undershirt, boxers, and a sword, an old white dude in a nightshirt and a cap, and a beefy third guy in a... towel? Holding a trunk as a weapon. That would be the Black Knight, Jarvis the Butler, and Hercules. You know, a mess of old white guys. <laughs> and this is the Avengers? Okay, I have to admit that I was kind of expecting something more? It is them, but I grant you that they are not too intimidating in their sleeping gear. No offense, but when you're expecting the Avengers, these three dudes, no matter what their sartorial choices may be, are just not that impressive. Hercules and the Black Knight are it? I know them from the papers. 
Darn, we could have outrun them. Or at least outflown. See, Jack and Julie get it. But unlike them, some of our listeners may not know these two Avengers. Wait, who's not heard of Hercules? Well, he is not being played by Kevin Sorbo or Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he is not exactly from the pages of Homer's The Odyssey. Okay, so this is not a legendary journey, but it is in New York. Man, I always forget that Arnie played Hercules once. Yeah, so let's just talk about the Greek god for a minute. It is Hercules from Greek mythology. This modern interpretation has him painted in very broad strokes as insanely strong, full of mirth, hot-headed, and always looking for a party in a keg. A.K.A. Stereotypical Jock Frat Boy. Black Knight, also known as Dane Whitman, is an excellent swordman who has an enchanted blade that has been passed down through his family. A.K.A. Stereotypical SCA Dude. So, not the A-list team, but we are burying the lead because the Awakened and Attacking Avengers avert all advances after attending and acknowledging the appearance of the absent, all-powered adolescent. Jarvis and Franklin have a sweet reunion as all of the kids try to explain why they are here. In retelling the story, Franklin mentions the snarks, which causes Jarvis to finally understand the incomprehensible note that Johnny left for him. Jarvis removes the note from the fridge, giving it to the kids. It says, Jarvis, have gone to snarks to find Franklin. Neat! Well, sure, Julie, but you have context for the note. Poor Jarvis has probably been looking for the specific Rosetta Stone to decipher this enigma. It was Johnny Storm who left the note. He should have started with a Chex Dakota ring. Alex is worried that the Fantastic Four will run into Maraud, but Jack is of the opinion that in the off chance they do find Maraud, what could she do to the Fantastic Four? Huh, well that sounds like a setup for a... Meanwhile in space... Home of the exiled ex-empress. I don't think she was an empress. Well, I wanted it to alliterate. Fair enough, but then you could have called her the quarantined quitted queen. In an amazing set of coincidences that could only exist in a comic book or a Quentin Tarantino film, the fantastic ship is flying right by the HMS Bitter Broke Baroness. It appears that Maraud is looking for some target practice, and this incoming ship is perfect. I mean, how else is she going to get rid of her stress? That's right. She has taken up space piracy, which means that Emperor Bacha, in exiling instead of executing her, has made Maraud the universe's problem. In work speak, that is called promoting away a headache. Insert our slow golf clap here. Maraud decides to hold fire until the strange ship gets closer, which allows us as the reader to check in on the four fighters who are fantastic. What exactly are they doing, Rick? They are roasting hot dogs. <laughs> uh, uh, no, silly. What are they doing in their spaceship? They are roasting hot dogs. <laughs> but, 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 spaceship. Look. I don't know what you want from me. The answer is not going to change. Sue has a force bubble with hot dogs inside, while Johnny is in his human torch form, dancing fire on the outside of the bubble. So, so many questions. All beginning with why? Let's just save them for later, because... Beep, beep, beep. The beeping machine on the big light board is making funny science noises, obviously indicating some science is happening. To be a little less obtuse in our description, they notice Maraud's ship. Hey, don't you disparage my love of blinking lights and beeping machines. Okay. So, Reed verifies Maraud's ship matches the specs from the scroll database, and that is enough to make Sue act, well, a little bit like my co-host. Intelligent. And handsome. But I was going to say unreasonable. She states that they must be the monsters that stole her son. Reed is pumping the brakes on the acquisition train and decides to... Shocker. Ask questions instead of shooting. He sends out a message letting the Snarks know that he is looking for his son. Maraud, through the help of a universal translator, comprehends that this is the father of one of the brats that thwarted her. And she responds with lasers, not answers. Can we talk for a minute about how powerful Sue Richards is? Sure, Reed has brains, no tact, and can stretch, but Sue has beauty, intelligence, decades of writers who have mistreated her, invisibility, and amazing force fields. Reed directs her to activate her powers. This easily blocks the energy attack from the enemy ship. Reed then advises Sue to turn them invisible. Panic ensues in the despised and deplorably determined despot's ship. Maraud tells her subordinates to calm the heck down and check their instruments. But it's too late. Clang! Subterfuged ship successfully sets on the snark ship, and with a mighty... Rip! She-Hulk enters, yelling... It's clobberin' time! At this point, rip and tear from the Doom soundtrack needs to kick on, because this is just awesome. Meanwhile, back on Earth... 
home of the breakfast baking and bending beefcakes. Now let's just unpack that sense for a moment, shall we? First, we have Franklin sitting on the counter watching a now fully dressed Jarvis, thank you very much, make pancakes while declaring that they are his favorite. Franklin declaring that pancakes are his favorite. Just like popcorn and lentil soup, so, yeah, you know what, guys? Let's take a drink. Hercules, still waist wrapped, oh dear God. in a just large enough towel, is standing by the table with Katie sitting in the palm of his hand as he holds his arm nearly straight out. The Black Knight is dialing the powerhouse while holding Jack away. You see, Jack is trying to persuade them not to call their parents, and Alex and Julie are sitting at the table, coming to terms with the fact that their parents are going to kill them this time. Franklin is also giving Jarvis an overview of the life with Power Family, and how even though it is like total awesome sauce, he still misses his mommy and daddy. Now that the Black Knight has entered the number for the kid's house and the phone's ringing, he passes the phone over to... Hercules. Huh. That's a choice. Why would he do that? Simple. The Black Knight is a coward. Sure, he can face scrolls and demons, but a couple of angry parents from New York? <laughs> That's got him quaking in his helmet. Ha <laughs> ha! A fine idea, Dane. This may be quite a shock. No doubt they'll find my godlike delivery comforting. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. No one would find that comforting. At the table, all four kids are now whispering together about their predicament. Alex is ready to tell their parents about their powers. Julie is afraid it would snap their minds. Jack is comparing the situation to the Richards, and how they treat Franklin even when they have powers themselves. Katie is backing up Jack, saying that the Richards don't even seem to love Franklin. Meanwhile in space... Home of the Fighting Fantastic Four. Bam, sock, pop, wham, choke, thud. The Snarks are not pleased to find that they have attacked more super-powered humans. This is why you should always do research before you swipe right on that app. It probably is not helping that they attack the FF, or that the FF are looking for their lost little lamb. It probably is also not helping that no one has turned on any kind of translator. There's a lot of yelling and languages not understood by the other side. Reed leads his team into the control room where they find Maraud. The Queen tries to rally her troops with a... Cowards! Fools! Which does not have the same motivational tone as, say, what we do in life echoes in eternity. But it does inform the humans that the translator is working here, so Sue uses her force field to gently... Wham! Place Maraud onto a wall so she can politely start a dialogue. You can understand me, so talk. Where's Franklin? What have you done with my son? Ah, uh, diplomacy. Where would we be without you? Meanwhile, in a mostly empty apartment, home of the, oh dear God, not again, not again, parents. Yep, whether it was the ringing phone, a trip to the restroom, or an alarm going off, Maggie and Jim have woken up to find that their kids are gone again. Bring, bring. I'm really feeling sorry for these two. This is just mean. After running from room to room, they collapse into each other's arms, crying hysterically. On the other end of the line, the kids are feeling like they have caught a break since no one is answering. Jack even tries to say that their parents are on vacation, still trying to keep the toweled tower of testosterone from completing the call. Bring, bring! Jim finally answers the phone and talks to Hercules. So, that is a thing. Later, like minutes later, as Jim and Maggie improbably sprint over, Jarvis welcomes the distraught couple into the Avengers Mansion and informs them that the Fantastic Four are in space again and that the number that the powers have been calling to contact them about Franklin is connected to a currently empty building. This does little to calm the couple down as they are in the Avengers Mansion to talk about how they have been taking care of the Fantastic Four's kid while his parents are in space looking for their missing child. And as they enter the kitchen, James starts off by addressing Alex as Alexander. Ooh, that is a sheer sign that you are busted as a kid when you get the full name treatment. I have no idea what you're talking about, Jeffrey. Uh-oh. And Jim demands to know what in the wide, wide world of sports is going on. To lie or not to lie, that is the question that Alex tries to answer. But Franklin jumps in to say that it was his fault. He was sleepwalking and walked right out of the apartment. And the power kids wanted to stop him, and they wanted to wake up the power parents, but the kids knew the adults were tired. And, and, and... Jack and Katie pick up the story, saying that it is dangerous to wake up a sleepwalker. And Franklin walked right here, and he set off the alarms. And it works. While Franklin turns on the tears and is pleased for his parents, and the adults gather around for group hugs, the power kids have their own huddle about what just happened. 
Beyond the fact that Jack is impressed with the level of lying Franklin did, the kids doubt that the lie will hold up under deep scrutiny. There are some snark homeworld-sized holes that have been left open, and the kids are still taking sides on telling their parents whether or not they have powers. But the whispering kids are interrupted by a now-clothed Hercules. Hooray! Hooray! Whose uniform is an Illyrian-type helmet, a green battle harness, a gold belt, and green speedos. Yay. Yay! And then he picks up Katie. Boo! See, he wants to be Franklin's friend's friend, and to hear about their space adventures. And he obviously does not understand personal space. Later at the breakfast table, the powers are explaining who and what the snarks are, and why they have bothered them. You know why. Because of the invention James Power made, and that the snarks wanted in issue number one. Alex actually pushes the theory about the snarks still wanting it, even though it was destroyed long ago. <laughs> By Alex. Meanwhile in space... Home of the homeward-headed horses. So, uh, interesting thing here. There seems to be more than the two chameleons we were expecting on this snark ship. Uh, what do you mean? Well, Yurik and Coffee were sent to return Power Pack to Earth with the Snark Royal Escort on a Snark ship. That is the ship they left on and are returning on. But now the ship is crewed by chameleons, not Snarks. It is a cloaking ship. Maybe they cloaked their appearance because they were not wanted in the squadron. Or the artist and the editor were not paying as close of attention as they should have been. Nope, that doesn't seem plausible, even though it has happened a couple of times in this issue. Moving on, Kofi and Yurik are talking about the pack when they spot Murad's cruiser with the Fantastic Four ship. The ship they recognized passing last issue attached to it. The extraterrestrial equines equate the exterior epoxied explorer to Franklin's parents, and assuming that Murad has captured the questing quads, the two horsemen of the snark ship pop over to save them from Murad's piracy. Bleep! Save who from whom? The FF are doing just fine. At this point, it looks like Murad is the one that needs saving. You know, I think you're right. In fact, I think I hear her singing. Some snark will save me. Get the warm blood's hands off of me. Some snark will save me. I don't care how you do it, just kill, help, come on, will you just let me go? You know, Smallville does feature an alien, a bunch in fact, uh, but, but, but seriously, uh, no. Although the Chimeleons teleport into a fight, they quickly figure out who the FF are, and they appear to be like Charlie Sheen and WINNING! Kofi teleports into Sue's bubble. Gosh, what is it about guys invading ladies' personal space in this issue? Well, this time it was done so that Murad won't get hurt and create a vendetta between her clan and Earth, which, let's face facts, wouldn't go well for her at all. Kofi manages to draw Sue's attention to him by saying that he took Franklin, but it is not the attention he wants. You see, She-Hulk heard this and decided to get into the personal space invading business and tries to tackle him. Thinking quickly, Kofi teleports out of the way and finally tells Sue that Franklin is at home. This causes the fight to simmer down to a nice easy boil while explanations are made. Yurik and Murad provide some additional exposition about the last few issues, with Murad bringing up the same old song and dance about how Jackal was her son and blah 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 blah. Wake me up when this merry-go-round comes to a stop. Apparently Murad is still a little bit bitter. Jackal was my son! He died cursing you. And on that mic drop, Yurik gathers the FF and tells them to forget Mrs. Whiny Pants and get home to their son. Sue cools off and begs Reed to forget Murad. And as the four humans start to walk away, Reed decides to draw a line in the cosmic space sand. He stretches out his arm around the queen's neck and declares. And now, Marad, know this. If you so much as look my son's way again, if you so much as enter Earth's solar system, I'll come after you, and I'll destroy you. And he wings her into a group of snarks, picking up a nice 710 split along the way. Yurik modifies the Fantastic Ship's navigation computer to guide the humans back to Earth through a hyperspace shortcut. And then, with a final wave, the Chimeleons send the Fantastic Four home. Also, Yurik tells Kofi that they need to go and have a word with Marad again. Meanwhile, back on Earth... Home of the touring guests. Jarvis is showing the guests around the mansion while the kids are still arguing about whether they should or should not tell their parents about their powers. The battle lines are pretty well set. Jack is even taking Katie's side. For once, old baby face is right. They'd freak 
big time! But before the kids can make a final decision, there is a... Rumble, rumble, rumble. Everyone runs upstairs to see... Nothing! Absolutely nothing! It is not nothing. It just looks like nothing. It is actually something with the appearance of nothing. And that nothing begins to be something as the Fantastic Ship appears. Sue had turned it invisible so they could land at the Avengers Mansion secretly so as to not bother the neighbors. You mean besides the rumbling? Eh, it's not a perfect plan. The first ones out of the ship are Reed and Sue, and they see Franklin's sad little face. Aww. With a stretched out hand that turns into a slide arm, Reed picks up his son while Sue runs forward. The family embraces in a big hug while everyone watches. There may be some tears. See, they do love him in spite of his powers, and he doesn't have to lie to them. Well, that's just great. Ma Power hears Katie's cry and wants to know what is not fair. The kids are caught off guard, and even as Julie is about to spill the beans, Jack covers. Well, we're gonna meet the Fantastic Four. Why does it have to be in our pajamas? Later, the FF recount their adventures, including that they met Maraud and that Reed threatened her. Awesome! Sue notices Julie's costume slash pajamas and makes the connection that it is similar to the Chimelian spacesuits. Julie makes up a lie that one of the Chimelian smart ships made it for her, which is kind of true. But Alex has already started to ponder how many lies they have told, and when will he catch up with them? Before he can convince himself to tell everyone the truth, Reed invites James to check out his lab. This crushes Alex, who would love to come along, but he knows how mad his dad is at him. So, as the opening bars of All By Myself begin to play in his head, he is completely caught off guard when his dad pulls some awesome out of his pocket and asks Reed if his son can join them. Melancholy tunes are replaced by the groove and funk of Cool and the Gang and the sweet, sweet lyrics of Celebration play in his mind as Alex dashes off to check this out. Hercules and Katie follow, and Sue and Margaret take the now-sleeping Franklin upstairs with Margaret saying that Frank can stay with them any time the FF have to be away. Roger Stern, Tom DeFalco, and Roy Thomas do a little dance, celebrating that they do not have to find a way to write Franklin out of their stories anymore. Julie and Jack are left alone on the couch, and they continue to discuss how Franklin's parents don't seem to mind his powers. And it sounds like Jack may be leaning a bit more towards telling the truth to their parents. And as the siblings sit and notice that there's nobody there, they both get an idea. This idea is that now, at this temporal juncture, would be an appropriate moment for an applied application of force. What does that mean? It means it's... Bobbering time. time! And they hit each other with pillows. What do you do? Read minds? Don't have to read minds, jerk. You're my brother. Meanwhile in Central Park. Home of the scene that has nothing to do with this story. We see some boys playing soccer and talking about Alex Power. Oh look, hey, one of the boys is Johnny Rival, our favorite school bully with the best villain name ever. He is still crooning that Alex is a mutie, and it seems like he has been singing this song so long, the others are ready for a rest. They tell him to change his tune, but Johnny keeps right on whistling away. The others are tired of his pitch, so they skip the track by walking away, reminding him that Alex pounded his drum last time. I see what you did there. I have one more. They tell him it could be trouble. Well, that starts with T, and that reminds me that you've gone too far. Johnny was thinking about calling X-Factor, but apparently they charge money. So he has a better idea. He will deal with Mr. Super Strength Mutie Alex Power by himself. And he says that he has a way of evening the odds this time. And so, on the last panel, we see him pull out a gun. Oh boy. Next issue, Spider-Man and Hobgoblin 2. da 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 da, -da. It's themes of this issue starting with the power pack packaging time dancing you got that tune <laughs> i got a tune you got a tune and a -tune. i'm dancing to it so uh this one was drawn by carl potts yeah yeah the yeah. editor of the issue drew this issue they had a lot of different names in the uh, credits this time yeah yeah but this one it was, it was interesting this is a actual car pot he drew about 30 covers over the his decade that he worked at marvel most of them were the punisher but it's kind of interesting to see that you know he did this it's not too bad of a drawing it's definitely different than what we've seen in the past but it's kind of interesting so the upper part of this issue cover has the fantastic four ripping through metal and you see them coming through and you had you know reed and sue actually it's kind of funny because it kind of looks like reed's the one ripping it apart but you know she hulk's got it's actually She-Hulk and uh, uh, Sue. Sue who are 
pushing uh, the walls apart. And Johnny Storm's flying in, and Reed's all um, stretched out and stuff, and they're coming towards the Maraud Mar- and her two of her goons. The bottom part, we have the power pack invading at the Avengers mansion and they're getting ready to throw down with Black Knight and Hercules and everybody's all garbed up and they're all in their costumes and it's go time. It's go time. What what happened to the pack? Did Purple Man get them? Are they going to attack the Avengers mansion and destroy these two? One, a demigod and another, an Excalibur kind of wielding knight of ages past. Oh, this is going to be exciting. It, uh, the, my half is also kind of a lie. Yeah, my, my half is true. Yeah, your half is Mine's super very, accurate. Very, that is almost a scene right, yeah. from the comic. Uh, it's just that, you know, it was actually She-Hulk that ripped it all open. Yeah. But, you know, but, but still, that's right. Yeah, yeah She-Hulk with the letter rip, you know, just, yeah. just tears it open. Yeah, it's the, great. The only part about the bottom that's correct is that Hercules at one point in time does get dressed up like that. Yeah, at some point, Hercules is wearing his normal clothes, quote yeah. unquote. Uh, and uh, Black Knight at no point Black is ever Knight in his never, arm. Never, he, he, yeah, he goes from boxers and a sweatshirt to, uh, not even a sweatshirt, yeah, a uh, tank top to, uh, I think, uh, sweats and a hoodie. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> But, I mean, they never see the kids using their powers and no. stuff. But, uh, no, it, it's, it's, a, it's a partially lying cover. But, it's but a, it even says Power Pack invades the Avengers mansion. It's like, you know what? I, in I, a sense, I, I yes, will take but... that. I will take that. They do invade the mansion. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's Franklin's home. That's like... Uh... It's still Beanie. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the other part's right. The Fantastic Four do battle in space. And it's yep. not a bad. Not a bad. It oh. tells you that there's two concurrent storylines going on. Oh, I should mention also that uh, the anchor is uh, Brett Blevins, too, so... And Brett Blevins was well-known and respected artist, mostly for his work on New Mutants about this time. So, okay. yeah, he's uh, he's mostly that. But it's kind of interesting that they they had you know different people doing the cover on this. Yeah. Uh, speaking of new people doing art, because mm-hmm. we do have a new artist on this one, Terry Shoemaker. Terry Shoemaker, and it's uh, I called it very subdued. It's soft art. Yeah. In its own way, it's kind of yeah, it's weird stuff's there um you know everything's going on you got the characters you can tell who is who and what's going on it's just it's not as clean as the artists that we've seen in the past i mean we we've had june brigman we've had brent anderson we've got uh, joe bogdanoff Mm -hmm. and we really are used to their style and it's definite departure from their style it's we can recognize them the kids are drawn well for kids it's just it's it's not as clean of art as we've seen in the past. Yeah. It, it, it is, uh, you know, I've said it before, yeah, the artist change. It's scary. I don't like it. Uh, yeah. Again, the art is fine. It's just that you can definitely tell yeah. it's somebody else doing. I, I would say, I would it. say that it, as far as being a different artist, he's aping those that came before him pretty well mm-hmm. because it's, it's not a big departure. It's just not as clean. It, so. it, yeah. And again, it's fine. It, it's got a lot of the empty background space. It'll have, you know, it's like, here's a panel where it's like, oh, there's planets and nebula and stars and, you know, they're in space. That looks great. And here's the control room of uh, the Snark Cruiser. And then it'll just be like complete black background, complete right. white, uh, you know, white background, yellow background, blue background. You know, it's just, there'll be a lot of nothing going on there. And it, I don't know if it's just my uh, issue of the comic kind of being, you know, 30 odd years old, but it does kind of have like, kind of like a soft it has like a you know the Vaseline filter over the '60s show to say this is an attractive woman because you can barely see her because of the blur, and so it kind of has that blur filter on it. Yeah, it's just it's just not as detailed. Yeah. yeah. So the big topic of this issue was whether or not the kids are going to tell their parents. Yes, because of reasons. It, yeah. There was no. It was just bizarre. They were just like, oh, um, we got caught in the Avengers Mansion. Well, we better tell our parents that. We have superpowers now. It's the I, only I, explanation for why we're here. Right. No, because Franklin lives here. Right. But it's, How it's, are it's, you, yeah. it's kind of, it's, there's reasons why I can see them doing this. I'm, they're probably extremely tired. Uh-huh. They, they haven't slept all night. They've yeah, been, they've, they've, they've just, shot. well, they got a nap. They, they, they got, got a couple hours sleep couple hours uh, sleeps, prior to going to the Morlock tunnels where they saw a bunch of people they know dead. Dead. So yeah. they've kind of got that trauma going on. It really is kind of focused on Franklin. You know, Franklin wants to see his parents. It got them thinking about Franklin's relationship with his parents. You know, he, they know he's got powers, and they've tried to control his powers. They're scared about his powers. Is that how our parents are going to react? We just got back from space. There's a lot that's going on. I can see where they're having the conversation, but it's the convers- it's it's this ongoing argument they're having, yeah. and they can't have one good conversation because it keeps getting interrupted by yeah. you know the adults coming in. 
But it also just kind of goes round and round of yeah. Alex, like, we got to tell the parents. And Julie's like, oh, but you see how Franklin's parents, but maybe we should tell you yeah, how we should probably tell. It's yeah. kind of like, there's no reason. They're like, we're going to get caught in this lie. And it's like, what lie? You set off an alarm at Franklin's <laughs> home and now people are happy that he's back. Yeah. Uh, why Why are you so worked up about this? It's, uh, yeah, and again, they, like you were saying, yeah, tired and also and they, that, they but... just, you know, they know their parents are going to be like, oh yeah, my God. Yeah, really freaked and, out. But... And it is also another lie on top of another lie. Why yeah. were you out last night? Well, we're out because, you know, we found out that some of our friends were dying. Why did you go down to, because we got super proud. Mm. It's yeah. a lie. It's like Alex was saying at the end. It's a lie upon a lie. When is it going to get too much? When is your house of cards going to crumble? Yeah. So it's good that they're thinking about it because it, it's a big thing. It's true. But it, yeah. it's also it's the generic superhero mantra of uh, the lies I need to tell to protect myself and the people I'm lying right. to. Yeah. Right. It's nice to see that we got Fantastic Four throwing down big time. Oh yeah, they it is pretty <laughs> darn awesome what the the four do. It's it, uh, they go forgets. in and they just yeah they rip it up and they just slap Snarks around. Then they get cloak and dagger slapped around uh, you know the Emperor's elite guard. So don't come to Earth. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to, to, Earth is a bad neighborhood. To, to be with... fair, to be fair, the Starks Royal Guard they they were coming down there. They weren't expecting a fight. They yeah. got blindsided. Yeah, but really the we make fun of fantastic four but they have they are a premier oh yeah team yeah they, and totally they are. know how to you know fight they yeah. know how to work together and mm-hmm. to cause damage so yeah it does make sense that they can go in there and they can completely control the situation yeah. well, and again you know it's, it's like uh okay she hulk well you got a hulk yeah you know that's a big thing i got a laser i we have a hulk we have okay a hulk. uh i have a laser i have force fields and i'm invisible and i have a laser i'm and, rubber i have a laser i made a fire you know it's like and, and not only that but also uh i have force fields i'm invisible and i want my son <laughs> yeah very much so don't get in front of mob of mama bear yeah. looking for her son yep, yep, yep. yeah sue is edge <laughs> sue was on edge sue was very much on edge but you know with good reason it's you know, she, and, and like you know she wants her son this is her child she wants her son uh, and reed was a little on edge too yeah he threat you know, oh well he was after after uh after effect uh on edge sure sure he, he I mean, was just kind of like okay i know fully what's going on i have all the data points that i yeah. need to assess the situation and come up with a uh you know, a reasonable theory. And, and that theory is that <laughs> you don't come near my family <laughs> or my planet. Yeah. You stay away from my family. You stay away from my planet or I'm going to come back. And, and, and I know and, more than one Hulk. And, and if you want, and if you want to see my resume on this, yeah. I would like you to refer you to Galactus. Galactus, the <laughs> scrolls. Yeah. Those four scrolls that are cows. Well, no, I just, I wish, I'd like you to refer you to Galactus. Yeah. Like, you know, early on in yeah, our thing, yeah. I gave him a cease and desist yeah. order. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, a resume checker will be a Silver Surfer. <laughs> yeah. So we see that Fantastic Four are quite a team to be dealt with. I mean, they mm-hmm. they are imposing. Yeah, they're fantastic. They're fantastic. The Avengers. <laughs> well, just the ones that are asleep at the mansion. <laughs> this ain't, this this ain't no Endgame <laughs> Avengers movie here. This is. <laughs> <laughs> this was the made-for-TV special this, on an yes. off-brand channel. God, yes. All right, who can we afford? This, uh, well, this we was, can we can have we can have Jarvis. We gotta have Jarvis. Jarvis is willing to do the, anything. The, 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 this was this uh, was the unmade movie after the death of the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can have Hercules. He's like a Hulk. We couldn't uh, even get Lou Ferrigno back. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know. Yeah, the, uh, the Hercules wrapped in a towel. Literally, he's wrapped in a towel. He's wrapped in a towel. Yeah, for the majority of this thing. While he's holding and talking to Katie. Yeah. Um, well, I kind of get that. Um, he... uh, excuse me, Hercules, uh, could you please step away from my daughter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, Black Knight and Hercules. I'm uh, personally, I've always been a, a fan of Hercules because I mean, he's he is a powerhouse. However, uh, you know, when your special ability is punching, guess what? That's a lot of people's special ability. The, the Marvel Universe made Thor a heck of a lot more interesting than they've ever made Hercules. Yeah, they really, uh, you know, there was a time, I think it might have been during Civil War. Uh, that I thought Hercules was kind of interesting because he kind of slipped into his, he's a computer programmer. 
and he kind of p- went into his computer programmer guys. Huh. Yeah, so you know, it's just like he kind of pulled back. He had glasses I, and ponytail, I, and he kind of was like a. I, and again, except for that singular example that I just came up, yeah. I can't come up with any other interesting Herc. Uh, do you guys have any interesting Hercules stories, or is, is there any? Yeah, go if you have an interesting Hercules story, go to our web page and for this episode, write it on our notes there. Yeah, is yeah. When 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 do you remember a thing that Hercules did where you're like, dude, Herc's just super cool? Yeah, Jeff from presents dot wordpress dot com. Yeah, and then uh, Black Knight. Uh, you know, you see every comic publisher has a uh, armor wearing knights right. with uh, magic Black, swords. Black Knight's got his 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 points where he's interesting. He's he's been and done a couple of interesting things here and there. But yeah, it's kind of lame. You know, the concept. Okay, you just, okay. Here's your power set armor okay yeah armor's cool okay uh enchanted blade yeah. okay that's cool yeah so he's also he was also good with computers too oh well, all right maybe that was the time <laughs> i don't know but, i but know it, very little about but, Black but at the same time he's kind of good with computers but uh on a team with tony stark and hank pym yeah yeah he's kind of third string there <laughs> yeah i know well it's kind of like uh with uh you know jim power meeting reed in yeah. this one, you know, where he's even talking where Maggie's all like, oh, well, you know, the Snarks wanted, you know, Jim's, you know, device he created. He's a physicist. Yeah. And, you know, Power, Jim Powers is all like, yeah, nowhere on the <laughs> yeah. caliber of yeah, Reed yeah, Richards. Yeah, yeah. nowhere like you. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm this tier. I'm not that tier. But at the same time, it's not in this issue, but there's some future issues down the line where I know they have some conversations together and it's, they can actually talk to yeah, each other. I would want to see that in yeah. a comic, honestly. It, it's again, we always talk about like the slice of life stuff. I want that. I want the interactions with the, uh, you know, kind of the everyday mm-hmm. people and stuff. It's like, I've just was reading the, uh, uh, you know, marriage of Ben Grimm and, uh, Felicia Masters, yeah, you know, kind of thing, you know, recently, and it's like, you know, and it's, hey, they're having bachelor and bachelorette parties, yeah. and it is, it is both like, hey, Thor brought a keg, and also here's my buddy Wyatt, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. it's like I like the mixing of you know normals and superpowers and all that. It's just like I like, I like it when the fantastic is interacting with the mundane because yeah. it really puts it into the world. We like those kinds of interactions, and and they got something to talk about besides that. They've got families, yeah. Do you ever have those moments where you go down a rabbit hole so far that it's really not worth it to stop even though you should? Welcome to this segment. (laughs) I decided to see if The Breakfast Club was also a book as well as a beloved 80s film, but it is not. So I found a lot of lists of books that were reminiscent of The Breakfast Club, and after diving deep, and I mean really deep in those lists, I found a book that sounded interesting, and I read it, and it has nothing at all to do with this comic book period nothing i don't even think that they talk about eating breakfast in the book <laughs> <laughs> the book is called we are still tornadoes it was written by michael coon and susan mullen uh this is listed as a ya book but i would say it's more of a mature ya due to the language and some of the content the book focuses on the relationship between two 18 year old lifelong friends Fresh out of high school in 1982, she has gone away to college at Wake Forest, and he is stuck at their small town working at his dad's store, Agis Men's Clothing. These locations are very important because the narrative is delivered through the correspondence these two share with each other using stationery from their respective locations. Over the course of the year, these two best friends go through a roller coaster of emotions as various life events crash around them. After years of being able to see and talk to each other every day since they lived across the street from each other, they struggle to figure out how to communicate over a medium that is not conductive to sarcasm or knowing winks. But they have their inside jokes, their deep caring for each other, and their brutal honesty. The authors do an amazing job of weaving the story of their changing lives in a compelling and heartfelt way. I was very hooked early on in reading this, and I found myself burning through this in like one night. Even though I could guess where the book was going every step of the way, I found that it was a fun ride. I was really invested with the characters and found myself taking sides in the fights and anticipating the responses to the letters. And while it has nothing to do with this comic, I still found it to be a very pleasurable diversion. So much so that I would highly recommend anybody want to read it. It's a pretty quick read. Like I said, I got through it in one night, but nothing to do with this comic book. (laughs) But you know what was in this comic book? <laughs> what? Science. Yes, there was. So would you, like, bring us back into this comic book? You bet. I uh, totally will. Boy, oh boy, we got an interesting look at how the Fantastic Four prepare food in their spaceship, didn't we? Well, this got me thinking. 
How do real-life space explorers prepare their meals in space? Is it with an open flame in the command module with hot dogs floating in it? No, the answer is no. They prepare their food in a small galley. The space kitchen doesn't need to be too extravagant because much of the food can be eaten straight from their packets and all the drinks are dehydrated. Coffee, tea, milk, and juices are hydrated in their own pouch using a valve that dispenses hot or cold water attached to the station in the ISS service module, while a similar process is employed for rehydrating the soups, pastas, and other dried meals that they have. Astronauts use a forced air convection oven to heat the prepared meals that need warming. All told, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to reconstitute and heat a meal. So, no microwaves, no convection ovens, and no open barbecue pits, just hydrating and heating. And that is this week's Science Corner. Thank you very much. There was um, a very lack of open flame and hot dogs in that report, and that made me sad. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was surprised too. I'm like, don't you just have a giant ball of flame with food floating in it? You do, only if it's power. <laughs> That's a segue. <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> so let's talk about some final thoughts. Mm-hmm. Refrigerator gallery, not ISS space station gallery. I'm talking family refrigerator gallery. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, if we go up there and put a piece of artwork on there, it's going to float away. Unless we use a magnet. Or Velcros, which they use in space all the time. Velcro on everything. But I'm not going to Velcro my artwork to a fridge. Okay. What piece of art in the book needs to be put on the space station refrigerator? What do you have as a backup that is funny? My backup joke one is on page three, and I call it Unslumber Party. And this is when the power kids have... uh, turned their costumes off and are in their pajamas and out of a doorway bursts Hercules, uh, you know, front and center carrying a, like a foot locker. Cause he's going to smash people with it wrapped in a towel, the black knight in his, uh, boxers and, uh, you know, tank top and Jarvis in literally, uh, flippy slippers, a nightgown and cap as though he were Ebenezer Scrooge. I want to see him carrying a candle. And I absolutely <laughs> love this because it gives you almost too, informa- too much information about how these people sleep. Yes. Especially Hercules, because I don't think he went to bed wrapped in a towel. <laughs> At least he put it on before he grabbed the trunk. Yes. Thank you, Hercules, for that small, small favor. <laughs> so I'm just like, wow, I know what everybody wears when they go to sleep or lack thereof. Herc. <laughs> so it just made me laugh. I just loved seeing a, a two groups of superheroes in their pajamas or equivalents thereof. Well, I would like to say that I also have Hercules as my backup funny one. Mm-hmm. And this one is all the way on page 20. And it's this touching scene where you see the, the Franklin is being hugged by his mommy and daddy. And you see Power Pack in the background. And you see, you know, Johnny Storm and, and uh, She-Hulk back there. And you also see Hercules. And it looks like Hercules talking to them. And what I'm seeing is I'm seeing Hercules say, Thou dost not know how to pen a missive, young knave. <laughs> 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 chastising johnny about his note huh? uh-huh nice that's what i see when i look at that picture <laughs> <laughs> i like that i like the little background story that yeah, you threw in thank you very that's much. very very plausible <laughs> very plausible yes <laughs> <laughs> all right what do you have as your funny one my first place joke one is on page five and i call it dogs in space <laughs> And it is uh, the Fantastic Four in their, uh, you know, whatever, the piloting area, the command module part of their spaceship. And they're making hot dogs in space in a force field with the giant flaming fireman and She-Hulk with a giant tray of hot dog buns. It's just like, it's so ridiculous. ridiculous. I love it. It is just, it in no way makes sense. It's just kind of like, this. what are you you doing? You are, you're one of the smartest people on the planet and you're doing what yeah yeah it's just none of this none none of this no (laughs) i'm gonna go back to the back of the book here and this is page 21 and my funny one it's i I love this scene i just love this scene Mm -hmm. it's the three bottom panels Mm -hmm. and it's the clobber and time yeah it's clobber and time that's good it's it's where julie and jack are having their little conversation and she turns around and she grabs a pillow right before jack grabs a pillow and she smacks him upside the head with it it is 
just hilarious and it is very cute yeah so I, really I, had to, like I had that. to have that as my funny one that's the, it is a great scene yeah. too that is just, it's very sibling-esque what's your backup top one my backup top one is on page seven and i call it rip and tear you have my top one. <laughs> oh, nice yeah this is the uh, scene where uh yeah the fantastic four is forcefully bo- uh, boarding mirage ship go ahead and describe it i have it as enter she hulk nice <laughs> she's just diving downwards you know knees straight out johnny is right beside her and you know sue is you can see sue up there too but it, it's it's the entrance of she-hulk oh yeah you sent you send in your shock troop yeah. to uh to breach it's just perfect and yeah. she's cribbing the things line yeah it's really <laughs> cool on that and, and just a couple of panels above that is uh you know reads like hey uh you know she-Hulk, we're going to need your strength here pretty soon. And she's all ready to rip read. Yep. And then on that panel, the sound effect is rip. <laughs> My backup one is on page 17. And Reed reaching his arm across the, the room mm-hmm. and wrapping it around Marad's neck. Okay. What do you and call it? I call it Reed threatening. Nice. <laughs> I'm just being very simple here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he is. I, I I just there's something menacing and pretty impressive about that one. It's pretty cool. That's there's a, a fair amount of neat looking things. There's a lot of great stuff in this issue. Really what was your What was your top one? My top one is on page five, and I call it "Dogs in Space." <laughs> <laughs> you just can't get enough I of that. I can't one. <laughs> get away from the hot dog scene because it is amazing. <laughs> First of all, it's a joke because it's ridiculous, and it's also my top one because it's amazing. There's a lot of detail. They've got the control panel and all the tech stuff going on, and hot dog buns and flames and just powers being used. It's so much stuff is going on. I'm like, this is an amazing little bit that if it was out of context, you'd be like, I have no clue what's happening here, (laughs) but it is just amazing art. It's both amazing art and amazingly ridiculous. And just ridiculous, yeah. Yep. I, I I do want to do a special mention, and it's on page nineteen, and it's the, the scene where the Reed Richards uh, picks up Franklin and their home. Oh yeah, and, and the it's, slide it's, arm. It's, yeah, the slide arm. It's especially right next to the picture of Franklin just looking sad as anything. Oh yeah, I know. So it's it's, it's a good special mention one, and we'll include that one as well. Let's get to some of the best moments in this. Mm-hmm. The moments where they are insulting each other. All right. The old rubber and glue moment. The old rubber and glue moment. Uh-huh. Um, my backup is on page 19, and it is a Jack moment. Yeah. And he's whispering. He's whispering to Alex. And it's right at the top of the page. If you, if you would mind, sir. Oh, yes. This is when uh, the Fantastic Ship is returning back. Right. And uh, But yeah, they've been arguing about, like, should we pill powers or not? And Jack is agreeing with Katie because, you know, Katie's mm-hmm. like... You know, Katie's all, no, they don't. Frank's mom and his dad, you know, know he has powers and see how they treat him. And Jack's all, for once, old baby face is right. They'd freak big time. They'd holy cow. Because the ship's coming in. But yeah, the baby I, face. Old baby old face. Old baby face. Old baby face is good. Yeah. What do you got? My backup is on page two. And it's uh, kind of a, a Julie setting Jack up for a thing. And it's, uh, you know, the, they know that the Avengers are going to come and get them. And so they're like, oh, we better turn into our, you know, our, our costumes. And Julie's all, yeah, we better just play it like we're dumb little kids. And Jack is perfectly set up by that uh, to talk about Katie by going, great idea. Jerk face here ought to have no problem with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and i just yeah it's just a jerk uh, face oh uh, jack because it's a jerk face and a burn saying yeah be, pretending to be a dumb little kid somebody's a master of that one <laughs> i'm gonna be surprised if we don't have the same first place one Ooh, i'm curious what's it what page page 13 page 13 go Is ahead it sir. jack it's jack Is you know it which one jack yeah, I know. It's great. This is a Katie is uh, talking about how, you know, uh, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Basic. But he's she, this time she's talking about how, uh, you know, their parent, you know, Franklin's the youngest one now and yeah. and their parents love him best and how, you know, basically going, eh, Franklin's going to live with us and my parents love him more than they love me. And uh, Jack's all if all oh, the dumb cry baby jerk face things to say. 
<laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. It, and you notice my previous one had jerk face in it, and now it's just even more jerk face. It, it's got the same. It's got the the one from mine too. It's like yeah. the. It's got the you know yeah. cry baby. Cry baby. Yeah. 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 So it's he, he's tying them all together. Yeah. He's 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 just throughout the entire episode is just keeping that string <laughs> and just knitting himself an insult sweater. <laughs> Very nicely said. <laughs> so speaking of an insult sweater, let's see who gets to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the new category who's wearing the insult sweater we also call it stars in detention but you know we're willing to we're willing to work with it a bit uh so who's your detention kid that we're gonna make wear the itchy sweater i'm gonna say katie wow okay yeah. how come katie um i'm gonna read my note here uh-huh you ready yes she's just not recognizing stranger danger oh <laughs> I had a very hard time picking out which kid was the worst and which kid. This was a very uh, rough one for yeah, a kid. Yeah, yeah so there was because a lot of, of that, ties yeah, in my so book. Yeah. Because of that, I just went with Katie because she's letting Hercules be around her an awful lot. Yeah, but if you <laughs> I notice know, in I know, any I know. previous installment where there's been a, you know, a, there is a strong X-Men, there is a strong Fantastic Four member, there is yeah. a strong, you know, any of the, the big strong guys is just kind of like... She's just kind of climbing on them yeah. and stuff. Of, of all the the reasons why they should or should not tell their parents, hers was, well, they just aren't going to love us anymore. Look at how, you know, Frank... I mean, Franklin's parents it's, it's, treat him. It's, and they it's, have it's very, very... It is the baby. It is the child yeah. child way of thinking about it. And so I was kind of just getting a little tired of her... I get that. ...side of things. I get that. That's where my coin landed. Okay. Who's yours? My coin landed on Alex. Okay. Yeah, mine was Alex just because he immediately was like, we're going to have to tell everybody about our powers now. Uh, why? Because we're going to have to, and everything's terrible, and my dad hates me, and I won't get to go to the lab, and oh, we're lying. You know, it was just like, he was very down. Yeah. He's he was a little very bit of a sad sack perpetually. On yeah, he was sad sack, and he was perpetually, he gave up. Yeah. And he continued to give up. He just, it was just, everything sucks, and I'm it's just, I can't know. You know, so that was that was why yeah. I picked him. And I think I think either way, it's probably right. Yeah, there it, it, there was several people that were. It was a good choice. Both yeah. of those, I think, are ideal choices for, for my best kid. I'm going to say Franklin. Really? Okay. Yeah, uh, he was not my best, but he was tied. He saved the powers bacon. Yes, he did. He 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 could string together a good old lie there, mm -hmm. and um, he kind of was the impetus for the story too. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I can all of his decisions to do things you know getting the powers to take him to uh the avengers mansion yeah um telling lies to protect his friends being sad because his parents are there yeah i can see where he's coming from oh, yeah, totally. i really can yeah. and then just the utter joy that he's got when his parents are back and and how he's just like oh it's the avengers it's the avengers mansion you know that's where i live and stuff yeah, it's, 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 it's all cool you yeah know? it's uh if that's where you you have right. your teddy bear and your pajamas you're not going to be too awed by it. Sure. That's that's where you brush your teeth and uh, you know watch maybe some talkies with Jarvis on yeah. occasion. So, <laughs> but so yeah, who did you have? Mine was Jack. Okay, and it, it was just because uh, Franklin was he was top on my list as well. But Jack was constantly hustling. He was the only one in the family that was all like. How about this? How about yeah. this? How about this? He was, you know, he was Chevy chasing it really hard. He was, you know, it's <laughs> Fletch time. What's, Fletching it. Fletching what story it. is going to get it going? What's where? We, you know, how can I shut you down? So he was constantly doing that. It was great. And he's like, okay, the phone's even after the phone calls going through, and it's like nobody's he's picked like, up yet. It's I, because I'm parents still, are on I'm vacation. Gonna, I'm gonna still make this work. Yeah, I'm gonna make still, this work. Yeah. So he was constantly hustling. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I really I, respect I've him got no problem at all with. And, and I, it was this was just a very difficult one. It, yeah. There wasn't much to distinguish him. You had to really kind of dig down deep to get there. So yeah, basically, yeah. No G forces. No G force. So it's zero G's. Uh, you can find that in space, possibly on Mirage ship after She Hole got busy ripping a hole in it. Well, yeah, they don't have a hole there anymore. That, yeah. That's that's gonna suck. Yeah, well, for snarks. Who no, cares? no, no. It's gonna suck. Oh, into, into space because yeah. of the vacuum. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and that gives us a G average of 1.1, which you can find between the surface gravity of Earth and Neptune. And uh, our G total is 31, which is three more Gs than the surface of the Sun. Huzzah! Huzzah! We now have top grades. We want to evaluate this issue with the rest of the series. Power Pack 25 tops our list with Power Trip. And um, how are we feeling about this one? I don't know. It's, it's fine. Fine. It's not amazing. No. It's... Uh, the... I don't think it's... I don't think it's incredibly... Um, 
important? No, it's not. Uh, the most important thing is that Franklin can now be home with his parents. And his parents have met the powers. It can. It tied in to give more reason why Franklin could be hanging sure. out with the powers in the future, which is great. It was kind of a round and round yeah. issue where it was just like, yeah, we're kind of covering the same It, it, it felt topic a little filler-esque it was, between, yeah. between what happened last issue and what I know we're going to be going into the next couple yeah. of issues. It was put in the smallest bow on the previous package, and that yeah. was simply just to get Franklin home. That was really the entire topic of it. That was it. I'm looking pretty low on the list myself here. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm willing to actually drop it below number 24, which is Uncanny X-Men. 205 wounded, wounded Wolf. Okay. I think that was a bit more of a deep issue. Yeah. Do you think it's uh, better than some of the old Dragon Man stories, storyline stuff? Uh, I still, I would say actually below number 15, Reckoning. It had a demigod and a towel. I know you like towels. You're right. That that drops it below the great <laughs> Goo Gam treasure hunt. <laughs> uh, there are still some pieces with the great Goo Gam treasure hunt that I don't like. You know what? I'm fine with it being the new number 27 above Man and Dragon Man. Okay, so between Reckoning and Man and Dragon Man, I'm absolutely fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Let us go ahead and talk a little bit about our beer from Oslan Brewing, mm -hmm. Dawn Patrol. This is good. I'm still enjoying this. Um, the yeah, I, I haven't really been drinking it so much. I picked it up a couple of times. It's it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not minding it. I mean, it's as far as a hoppy beer mm -hmm. it's pleasant yeah um it's got good taste it's good for a nice hot day so I, i'm quite happy with this one i i would say that this is probably a it's probably above a three and a half for me i maybe three and a half or four i'm gonna go for a three and a half for me it's it, it's very much a it's fine i'm i'm enjoying it enough it's not one where i'd be like i need to keep getting that into me it's right. just it's very much like yeah this is it's pleasant it's a beer i like beer yeah it's a beer and uh it's very much like yeah i i would i would drink that i, I think i'm gonna go for a four i i i like it a little bit better than that um it's something that i would choose again okay. with limited selections so i would probably choose this one again no, so i'm gonna say it's a four for yeah, me uh, i would drink it again yeah i wouldn't super specifically go and hunt it down no. If, I, if I saw it in a store, I'd be like, hey, I've had that. I wouldn't be like, ugh, that. I'd be like, oh, yeah. yeah. And if somebody said, how was it? I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. Oslon Brewing. I like the name of their brewing. And that brings us to Kid's Perspective. And that's where Rick talks to his daughter, Carrie, about this issue. So, Rick, Carrie, why don't you have a little talk and share it with us? Hi, Carrie. Hi, Daddy. How you doing? Good. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. And a brand new comic. Yeah. We're talking about Power Pack number 28. And it um, also has Fantastic Four. Uh-huh. Who else is in it? The Avengers. The Avengers? Yep, the Avengers are in it, too. And the Snarks. Yep, Snarks are in there, too. There's that's a lot why, in this one, that's, isn't there? That's why um, there's a, a big action cover. Yeah. Tell me your overall opinion of it. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. Besides the Avengers, like, besides... Power Pack did not go um, to see the Snarks, nor did the other Avengers, but only the Fantastic Four. Well, that's why there's a big slash in there, right? Yeah. When Power Pack went and uh, met the Avengers, were, was Power Pack in their costumes? They quickly costumes off. Yeah. But Julie couldn't because um, she was naked. Right. So that's why she was like, okay, maybe I just will keep this on and nobody will notice and they'll just think it's my pajamas. Yep. <laughs> So, tell me what you thought about the book. What what happened in the book? As soon as the Avengers saw them, Franklin recognized somebody in there. So, that's why they didn't, you know, start a fight. Right. Which was good, because that would be good against good. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah, that means less heroes. <laughs> the parents didn't notice that their children escaped again. Until they woke up in the morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Were they a little upset about that? Yeah. You think mommy and I would be upset if you ran out of the house in the middle of the night? Yes. So are you going to do that? No. Good. I'm always too sleepy to do that. Yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> what else is in the book? And, like, breakfast with the Avengers. Yeah, who made breakfast? Jarvis? Yep, Jarvis made breakfast. And then Franklin says, mmm, pancakes, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that Franklin likes to say, my favorite. Yes, he does. So... Their parents were so close, so close to actually knowing their pa their kids' powers. 
Right. The kids were talking about that a lot of whether they should tell them their parents that they have powers or not, right? Yeah. Do you think they should? Well, if I had powers, I would tell you. Aw, thank you. And mommy. Why do you think that the power kids don't want to tell their parents? Because they, they think they've seen enough. They think that it would be too much for them? Yeah. That sounds fair though, right? Yeah. Katie and Jack were like, well, Franklin's mom and dad know that Franklin has powers and look how they treat him. But it turns out they treat him good. Right. They, they, they're worried about Franklin's powers. Yeah. So maybe they should, maybe they shouldn't, but kind of hard though, right? It's a hard decision. Very hard decision. That's why they're just making up big lies. They are making very big lies. But that's the hard thing, because if you tell them, then they'll get mad at you for lying. Yeah. That's going to be awkward. <laughs> it is going to be very awkward. Anything else you want to talk about, or is that about it? Well, all I have to say is it's a hard decision that they're going to make. But luckily you don't have to, because you don't have powers, right? <laughs> yeah, I wish. I sure wish we could fly. It would be nice to be able to fly. Then we wouldn't have to wait in traffic, right? Yeah. We could just fly out of the car and say, traffic, stop. <laughs> or we could just, like, mainly just fly on... Leave yeah. your car. We'd leave the car at home. We'd just fly from the house. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Thank you very much for your time, Carrie. You're welcome. I love you. I'll translate. That's shout out time. Okay. We would like to recognize those listeners that take time to write in or leave us a review. This is for episode 33, where we discussed issue number 26, Going Home. AJ. Al Sedano. Alexander. Charlie Rose. Charles Miller. Chris at BTO Bat Books. Craig McNichol. Dan Grote. David H. Adler. Ed Moore. Gibson. Green Lantern HG. Jeff Polier. Jeremy Daw. John from Married with Comics. Limax 7. Mal. Matthew Birdsey. Max Traver. Nicholas Prom at Comic Reflections Podcast. Pat Christatos Sampson. Power Pack Nation. Radioactive Dog Welder. Release Infinity. Sam's Tangled Web. Secret Wars and Beyond Podcast. Spider Ed Far From Home. Tim Price. Tommy. Trucker Talk. Warlock Thanos Podcast. And last but not least, we have a very special thank you to Stephen Gray. Stephen is one of our amazing supporters on Patreon, and he requested a parody song on the plight of the chameleon race, saying in the style of the Osmond's Crazy Horse. So, here you go, buddy. There's a smart ship floating in the air. Comes from Camellia. Would take you there. Except it can't, cause Camellia's gone. It blew up when their science went wrong. Now they're living on the colonies in outer space. The population of the entire alien race. Their space horses. Their space horses. We will be sending you a copy of that as well. Now, I have to admit that I'd never heard of this song before, and when I saw that it was from the Osmond Brothers, I was really expecting it to blow. And it did, but not in the way I was thinking. It blew me away. This song is amazing, and I want to thank you for introducing it to me. So thank you, Stephen, for that, and thank you so much for your patronage. We really, really do appreciate it, and you for your interactions and the time that you spend listening to our show. I cannot tell you how weird that was being here watching him sing the song i didn't know what was going to happen he put it together all by himself it was a thing it was a sight to behold be sure to check out some other shows that we're on specifically junior agent submissions that we put to mi6 rookie agents episodes of on her majesty's secret podcast and we have some merchandise available on redbubble Right now, it is just shirts and stickers around our logo, but we'll try to come up with some other fun stuff for our fans. So, go to redbubble.com and search for Unpacking the Power of Power Pack. Jeff and Rick Presents is a bi-weekly self-produced podcast recorded in front of a live studio audience of a lot of stuff in Portland, Oregon. If you would like to interact with us through the magic of the interwebs, you can do so through Twitter at Jeff and Rick Present, our Facebook page, Jeff and Rick Present, our email address, Jeff and Rick Present, all one word at gmail.com or at our website, Jeff and Rick present dot wordpress dot com. And if you would like to help support our show, we are on Patreon. You can find us at patreon.com Jeff and Rick present all one word. Please rate and review us anywhere on the internet that you possibly can. 
tell your friends about us, share your love for us on social media, and just, you know, throw our show at a random person on the street. Just grab a stranger and yell our name. And as always, we want to thank the wonderful women in our lives. My wife, Cindy, and our daughter, Carrie. My fiance, Hillary, and our daughter, Aurora. We We love love you. you. Until next time, Costumes costumes off. off. Our theme music is 80s action. Also featured in this episode is Laser Pack. All music is by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com and it's licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. Laser tag! <laughs> laser tag, Jeremy! It's laser tag! Do, do I need more cowbell? <laughs> laser tag! <laughs> Pop, wham, choke, dud. Featuring Power Pack. Alex Power, a.k.a. Nice, Rick. Aren't you a power pack expert? You don't even know Alex is a.k.a. Right. Powerhouse. It's Paxman. Pop, wham, choke, thud. Franklin guesses that, um, guess what? The alarm clothes. Um, guess what? The alarm clo- clothes. 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 Alarm codes. Franklin guesses that the alarm clothes may have changed. <laughs> you said clothes again. Pop, wham, choke, thud. Halt, miscreants, or face the wrath of Hercules. Jeff, it's, um, Hercules, like the Greek god, not Hercules as in Hercules Perot. I actually, uh, <laughs> looked up Greek, uh, English and Greek accents. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's what you're that's going with? That's pretty close, yeah. All right. I can do, I can do another <laughs> if you want. I can try something else. You, you, if that's your bliss, then I want you to follow it. Okay. Pop, wham, choke, thud. Black Knight, also known as Dane Whitman. <laughs> Insert name. <laughs> Pop, wham, choke, thud. Hercules, still waist wrapped in. Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> Hercules, still waist wrapped in. Oh, dear God. Just large enough to. <laughs> Let's see what you're doing now. <laughs> Pop, wham, choke, thud. A fine idea, Dane. This might be quite a shock. No, d- God, it's turned Scottish. It's turned Scottish. It's turned Scottish. <laughs> it's turned on you. Yeah. It's turned. <laughs> it's turned. Oh, the haggis has turned. Pop, wham, choke, thud. Oh, it's Aslan. It's the lion off of uh, the witch in the wardrobe. Yes. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> ha! Somebody's smart an hour later that someone is me. <laughs> <laughs>